Okay, the show, Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. No Mike Sempervivi. So it's not like Raw, he's not back after one show. We'll talk about that later. And this is from the front page of WrestlingObserver.com. WWE is continuing to pare down their talent roster, including announcing on Wednesday that Braun Strowman, Aleister Black, Lana, Murphy, Ruby Riot, and Santana Garrett have all been released. And then there's uh, some different information here about everybody. And uh, literally, that's that's like the, the news aspect of it is those people have been released. Now... Obviously, there are rumors today that perhaps other people will be released. I don't want to see anybody released. Obviously, if there are rumors of names, I'm not going to say any names right here. I do know that the way it normally works in WWE, usually, and not always, sometimes people find out about firings on social media, but often they will actually call people and alert them. I've been told there are people with their phones off today. I don't know if that means anything or not. Hopefully, this is all of them. I would prefer if nobody had gotten fired, but uh, they're gone. Now... If you look at this list right here, I mean, some of them are surprises, and some of them would be less of a surprise. Obviously, the biggest surprise is Braun Strowman. Braun Strowman has most of what they love. He's big. That's actually the main thing that they love. He's a big dude, and he's a guy that they have pushed If you look at the rest of this list right here, I guess the second biggest surprise would be Lana. And maybe the third biggest surprise would be Aleister Black. But if you you really think about things, I mean, Murphy, they did the storyline with uh, Rey Mysterio and his son and daughter. And they got together and it was like they did a storyline to get uh, Aaliyah and, uh, and Murphy together. And then they had absolutely no earthly idea what to do with it. It's like, well, what did you book a storyline for if you didn't know what to do when they got together? So they get together, and then they drop off the face of the earth, and then we have one week where Murphy shows up. He wants to be the the uh, uh, disciple of Seth again, and then he vanishes off the face of the earth. So can I say that I'm surprised that they cut Murphy? No. Was Murphy a super talented guy? And it's like, how could you not figure out something to do with Murphy? Of course. You could say that with everybody here. But they were doing nothing with Murphy, and so he's out of there. Alistair Black. Paul Heyman loved Alistair Black. Paul Heyman, when he lost his position uh, helping to do Raw, uh, obviously, you know, when they had Eric Bischoff and and Paul Heyman in charge of Raw and SmackDown, they weren't really in charge. But, like, Paul Heyman did have influence when he had that job. But still, everything had to go through Vince. You could see the way that Paul booked the shows. There were guys he wanted to do something with. And he would start, and then Vince would pull the plug. So he had a modicum of power, but it wasn't like he was fully in charge of the show. But clearly, he liked Aleister Black, and he wanted to do stuff with Aleister Black. And as soon as Heyman was gone, boom, Aleister Black drops off the face of the earth. He's gone. He's gone forever. They finally bring him back, and they start doing some vignettes. He's reading a book. And so, if you remember, and I would not blame you if you did not remember because of the follow-up, a couple of weeks ago, they were doing a main event on SmackDown, and Aleister Black returned. They had done a 30-minute multi-person match, and after all of this great wrestling, Aleister Black shows up, and it's a distraction finish. And Actually, he got in the ring and was involved in the finish. But that was like the main event angle of SmackDown. Did you watch the SmackDown the week, the week after? He's not there at all. Zero follow-up. Do you know what the excuse was for Alistair not being on the show? We didn't want to rush it. Can you imagine? And obviously it's not the same thing, but it's just like the first big angle that I could think of. Remember when Hulk Hogan turned and joined the New World Order? Can you imagine if he wasn't, like there was no mention of the New World Order on Nitro the next day? And the excuse was, we don't want to rush it. You shot a major angle on SmackDown and the guy wasn't even there. There was no mention of it the following week. Well, then he gets released. So, I mean, it's pretty clear that Vince just didn't want to do anything with the guy. And that's what happened. Alistair Black will talk about what he's talking about on Twitch here in a moment. Lana. Do you guys remember Lana and Rusev? The act was great. You had Rusev. You had Lana together. She would do the promos. He would kill people. Everything was great. So what do they do? Well, we can't leave good enough alone. We're going to break them up. 
Now, you guys remember when Rusev, uh, I think it was over SummerSlam weekend, like he requested his release, which I think he later denied, but like multiple sources said that he wanted to get out. And then eventually he was released. And the first thing he does is he goes to AEW. Lana, meanwhile, they did the storyline where, oh, we want to get Lana over. So we got this plan, and that is we're going to beat her on every single solitary show, and that's going to get her over. Well, Lo and behold, it didn't get her over. So then she's just floundering. She's doing random matches. I mean, everything that they had with with Lon and Rusev that worked, they stripped all of that away. They wanted her to be a wrestler. It's surprising she was cut because they had used her all the time. So I don't know what the situation was there. Ruby Riot, I mean, Ruby Riot's a very talented wrestler. But, I mean, in my opinion, watching the show, she did not care at all for a long time. I mean, she went in there, and she did her matches. You guys remember when they were kind of giving them that push, and then they just randomly got a tag title match on TV and lost? And over WrestleMania weekend, they had night one of WrestleMania, where they were going to do a a match where the winners were going to get a tag title shot for the women's titles on night two. The day of the show, Ruby Riot and Liv Morgan were going to win that match. And then they were going to go to WrestleMania the next day, and they were going to lose when they challenged for the tag titles. But instead, they came up the day of the show, they changed everything, they beat them, and then they had Natty and Tamina win, and then Natty and Tamina go to WrestleMania, and they lose. Which leads to a feud where they just keep wrestling. Why did they do this? It made no sense. I got no idea. You could watch Ruby on SmackDown, and she was she was there, but Ed didn't look to me like she was there. So uh, maybe she saw the writing on the wall. I don't know. And uh, Santana Garrett, you know, she had been in NXT, and uh, she was scheduled to be called up to the main roster. And she's waiting to be called up, and then they fired her. She never even showed up on the main roster. And if you look back at all of the firings uh, that we have seen over the last several months— Uh, Santana Garrett was not the only one who was either set to be called up or had uh, quote unquote officially been called up, never debuted, and then got fired. So then, of course, we've got um, Alistair Black was on Twitter and uh, Alistair Black said that he was told that it was uh, budgetary reasons. And if you remember Alexander Wolf, uh, he also publicly stated that he was told that it was budgetary reasons. I don't know if you guys are aware of this or not. I'm sure you are. But uh, WWE is making more money now than they have ever made, ever, all time, in the history of the promotion, dating back to 1963. Stone Cold Steve Austin on top, Hulk Hogan on top, The Rock, all of that. They're making more money now than they have ever made, ever. They don't need to cut anybody. So what's the crux of all of this, okay? I'm not saying this is inside information. I have no idea, okay? But I do know, and I guess if you want to report this, you can. There are a lot of people in WWE, in and around the business, fans. It's no secret. Everybody believes Nick Khan is setting this company up to be sold. How do you say it's budgetary reasons when you're making so much profit? Well, it's budgetary reasons when you decide that there's a finite amount of money that you're going to spend on talent. So you could profit a trillion dollars, but if you decide our talent budget is $50 million, then you can cut somebody because now your talent budget is at $55 million, but you want your talent budget to be at $50 million, and so $5 million for the people need to be cut for budgetary reasons, even though... And you could easily up that talent budget to $100 million if you wanted to, but they don't want to. Why? Why don't they want to? Well, it very much looks like we are paring everything down. We are unloading people with large contracts. We are unloading people that we are not doing anything with. We are finding out that, in fact, wait, we got a social media department for TV and a social media department for the Internet? What do we need two of them for? What's with the redundancy? Oh, well, we got to get rid of one of those. Everything is being pared down. I don't know what's going on. But as an outsider looking in, talking to other people, obviously, I mean, who, who doesn't see this? They're setting themselves up for a sale. That is my belief. I guess we'll find out. It would explain a lot of things. We can talk more about this after the break. Observer Live. If you enjoy these videos for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions 
of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.